Ooh, what's up guys? Of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with yours true of course, the Scarender. And today we got ourselves a match against the Ristle Man. I don't know if it's actually Thomas. And this guy is a long time follower and I upload a lot of battle with these guys actually. I think this is like my fifth or sixth battle with him. Um, we tend to battle a lot and I'm very glad to get a chance to do so. He's very formidable, using a lot of weird things which actually provide a good battle because of that. He has a lot of weird ideas that actually pans out in combination with you know, a few safe um, Pokemon that you can kind of rely on and uh, never fails to give me a good battle and I'm extremely glad for that of course. So looking for my opponent's team here, we got a lot of potential Eevee like Pokemon. We got Haunter, Crocodile, Yuxi, um, Lax Slime I was supposed to say there, but of course Quilladin, uh, Swinehater and the Clang Clang. And just looking through this team, there are a lot of Pokemon that can deal with my Vibrava. Uh, oh yeah, I myself use a Lampin, Dijama, uh, Grumpig, Caracosta, Malamar, and Vibrava. Vibrava is my go-to Pokemon in this battle. There are not a lot of his Pokemon that can deal with Vibrava. I'm just telling you right now, guys, Vibrava is the poke to have as a defensive wall, really. He can do a lot of weird things, and uh, my Jama is an Endure set, it's something I really want to try out. And my Lampent is a um, bulky set, I really wanted to test that out. Not the best team to do that due to his weaknesses, it kind of fails here. But anyway, just looking at this team, I do predict the Yuxi at the get-go, and I myself, I'm just going to bring my Lampent, because I know I can kind of deal with that, I can kind of get the honest chance to set up. So, yeah, basically, I need to beat my opponent fast because his team is much more bulky than mine is. So, uh, with all of this in mind, of course, guys, let's go. So, anyway, my opponent will actually start with his Kling Clang. And, you know, just looking at it, I knew that I could really stay in. Kling Clang can really do any, like, considerable amount of damage to the Lampent or Vralis. And I knew that, so just like I said, gonna stay in Evil Light, and that Volt Switch still did a lot of damage. I didn't really think about it then, but yeah, it does really a lot. He's gonna bring his magic, which is Yuxi, and I'm gonna showcase straight off the bat the Calm Mind. And definitely, I think I'm stressing my opponent here a bit, because now he sees that I'm not gonna pull in the punishes, I'm gonna actually set up straight off the bat. So he's gonna decide to switch out to his Hydreigon. Which actually wall this lamp quite well. Uh, and now when I say quite well, I mean completely. Um, both my stab moves is what I'm using here as an offensive pressure. And uh, they are not long for this world. My opponent will miss the crunch here because of the hustle. Which is great because I'm pretty sure that would have killed me. So I do hit with a shadow ball. I do roughly 50%. So I felt that I, I can't risk that one more time. I, I just can't. And I'm um, gonna go into my Ace Log. And Ace Log is some defensive Pokemon, you know, not about that. But it still does a lot of damage. But that is because of the. Well, you know, because of the hustle. It does just so much damage. I think there's 50% more in damage in an exchange of 20% uh, accuracy. Which is a good exchange. So, anyway, I knew my opponent would switch out. So I just took the chance to set up rocks. Ace Log is my defensive Caracosta. And it really can't do anything specific, it's more about walling and retaliating a bit. And having access to Aqua Jet just for last kill really. So anyway, I'm gonna go into Volt Joy because I know we can't really do anything against that. Uh, he's gonna go for Super Fang, sadly missing. Um, and uh, I knew he was gonna switch out here back to his Kling Clang. So I'm just gonna switch out to my Lamp and yet again. And of course, which now before him means that I am faster, which... Hell, Yama should be faster, there's no doubt about that. So he's gonna go to his Gears of War, and um, I'm not gonna lie now, I knew he was gonna go for a Volt Switch this time around, there's no reason for me to switch out. Uh, while I do have the ground type with Vibrava, I still felt that I can get a good hit on his uh, Hydreigon, hopefully kill it. And um, yeah, with Stealth Rocks and whatnot, it is actually pretty darn close, but he does live with a Slither of Health, so... Uh, that is really not what I wanted or predicted, and <laughs> I'm basically forced to switch out and sack something because I knew that he was gonna go for the outrage. I have no further views of the Acelog or um, Caracosta, so I'm gonna actually leave him to go down here. Um, because, like I said, I have no real further use of him. So I'm gonna go into Voltoid, which is my Jama, and actually just take it out straight off the bat. 
Uh, I don't want to deal with this Pokemon whatsoever. I don't want to give it the opportunity to keep going for uh, outrages and whatnot. So I really felt that, yeah, just finish it off, get the speed boost, bring out the Kling Clang. The, it should be my only priority right now. And uh, that was basically what I decided to do. So anyway, I knew he's gonna go yet again for the Bolt Switch or Flash Cannon maybe. So I just went for Vibrava. And Vibrava has no nickname because the nickname I gave it was... Um, it wasn't a good nickname and it didn't pull through when I traded it. So kind of strange, kind of strange. Uh, I have to make one new one. I really feel that. I really like the nickname of my Pokemon. So anyway, he's gonna bring his magic to Yuxi. I predicted something like that and went for the U-turn. And look at the damage, that is pitiful. That That is really bad. Uh, I am obviously not invested whatsoever, but still, that is really, really bad. Uh, so I'm gonna go bring my Seratul. And yeah, Seratul is there. And basically, I knew it was gonna switch out, so I just went for a knockoff, if I re remember correctly. Uh, he was probably predicting me to go for a superpower. So that is the whole throw right away. That is a really, really tough prediction my opponent did there. Um, I don't know if the risk was worth it, but man, that sucked. So anyway, he's gonna go to his Lax Lime, the Quilladin. And uh, yeah, I actually didn't feel that um, comfortable staying in. I knew he had Super Power or um, Super Fang, so I just felt to go into Viralis, hope he goes for Super Fang, and then retaliate him because I know he can't really do anything to me. Uh, so that was a safe bet, of course, because he missed with the Yama against the Yama before I knew the set. So you gotta go to the Splintstone and. Um, I think I went for a paint split, yeah, just want to recover some damage, and look at this paint split was here, I felt that it's kinda obvious that he could go for a Dragon Dance, I don't wanna, you know, let him do so, so I decided to stay in and take a hit, that obviously kill, I don't think the crit matter, it's sheer force after all, and um, yeah, it, it's really powerful. So anyway, now I know it doesn't have any ghost type whatsoever, so I'm free to go for what superpower I want to and really build myself up here. I really felt that I got the key entry now and um, I'm gonna do the best of my abilities to do just that and get my setup going. And one super power and I'm gonna go for a second one. I do outspeed, kind of like I said, build myself up before going for a knockoff to finish it off. And uh, he's gone for super fang. I mean, there is no way of working around it. It's kind of obvious. A bit of lag here, guys. I promise you, it will actually it will stop. It will stop soon. So anyway, I do hit him with a knockoff, but he survives with a slither of health, and he will set up lead seed on me, which is well, that's bad. That is really really bad. Like I said, guys, he survived with a slither of health, and I will finish it off with a last superpower, but it is still too late. I mean, I got the leech going. I lost 50% of my HP. The lag will end soon. Sorry, guys, about that. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, he's gonna go to his gears. There's no reason for me to switch out. I know it feels that he could potentially pack the signal beam, but at this point, being leech and being whittled down, there is there's no way I could have done this differently. I really had to fire something up, and now I lock, know he's locked into signal beam. I felt Vibrava is my safest bet, and um, basically. I can freely go for EQs if I want to, I only got magic left, which I felt was his obvious switch in. I think I actually decided to go for U-turn eventually, but I had that in mind that that is the only Pokemon walling me from going for E-Earthquakes. So yeah, definitely kept that in mind, went for another U-turn. I really don't like going for a second U-turn against a Pokemon that I already U-turn on, because I do risk the potentially, or the potential of he staying in and me coming in a bad position really. So anyway, I go for Signal Beam, and I try to ping actually first to finish this one off. But after it shows me the both Reflect and Light Screen, I will then decide to actually stall a bit here. And I'm not stalling because, you know, it's dangerous for me or anything. But really, the defense boost can whittle me down eventually. And there is no way for me of actually work around that. So I felt if I can bring in Vibrava, go for a U-turn, bring back the um, Grump Pig and then switch back to Vibrava and just stall it out with Roost that I could get away with his uh, screens and by default I didn't really have to worry about any potential last minute uh, sweeps where I can't feel myself enough to kind of come through so like I said there are a bit of stalling guys hold on on this 
uh, I really, like I said, I wanted really to come through here, and this was my only way of doing so. So bringing my Grump again was basically just to actually force him to go for an attacking move while I bring in the Vibrava, and I should rather sped this thing up. I really feel that right now. You're gonna have to listen to my beautiful voice instead. Vibrava takes it like a champ, though. It really does take special hits kind of well, even though we got some questionable, especially defensive. But you know, with roofs and whatnot, it is really helpful. And my opponent eventually starts seeing what I'm doing and will actually switch out. I should definitely go for an earthquake this time, thinking that he knew what I was all about. I sadly didn't do that, and I felt that ah, oh, such opportunity for him to set up here. And um, basically, I had as long as this Crocodile didn't have the um, Aqua Jet, I could be in a good position. But I need my Vibrava for the Clink Clang, and for that to work out, I need a Vibrava or the what's it called the. Um, the Yuxi to be gone. So anyway, he goes to Ice Fang. I have, of course, Thick Bat, but in combination with that and Crunch, I will be taken out, sadly. And uh, that is my beautiful Grumpy out of the way. So that's kind of bad. I mean, he did some thing here. He actually walled the Yuxi kind of well, but I got into Jolt Void, and basically I did this because I knew he was gonna switch out, and he was gonna switch out to Kling Clang, and. Um, Basically, I just I had to do it. I have to hit something and something hard. And um, he's actually bringing the magic and uh, gonna take it out. No, wait. I think I went for an endure. Yeah, I showcased my game idea. Yeah, that that that's not that's not good. That's not good. Uh, so the good thing is that Yuxi is out of the way, of course. But at the same time, my Yolt Void, the Jama, can. Do anything against Kling Clang, and that is gonna be a major hassle for me. So I'm gonna bring Vibrava. He's gonna go for Flash Cannon, and now is the time I realize that this thing probably specs, probably like that. That did some very very fair damage, and he's able to outspeed me, which is even worse. But while I do go for the EQ, it is not enough to take him out. It's close though. It's pretty darn close. It's actually annoying how close that is. But anyway, I have to accept the fate, and we probably will go down. And my last Pokemon is the Jama. And like I said, as of right now, I don't know if my opponent has Aqua Jet. So I'm just going to go for another Endure. The reason I did this was because I really want to make sure that I'm able to outspeed the Crocodile Jaw and him. Because due to him being able to outspeed with Vibrava, I wasn't really sure I could outspeed it with the Jama. So that meant Endure, you know, getting the speed boost going, which is really nice. And the Gen just basically kill him. Go bug bus. And like I said, the last matchup is gonna be the Crocodile against the Janma. And the bigger question, like I said, is does it have Dakwood yet? Can I deal with that? And if so, can I prolong in some fashion? So I'm going actually to go for an injury here, hoping that it showcases Dakwood yet. Not because it matters, it's basically me prolonging my inevitable bit of inevitable fate if that was the case. But it goes for a dragon dance. So so far, I felt good. I felt really good here. And so I went for the Giga Drain, and it is actually enough to finish off this battle. I actually find out later on here, while my Jama is kind of strong, that his uh, Crocodile is actually life orbed. So yeah, pretty unique set there. And um, yeah, I obviously won eventually but I had to stall this out I really did I played quite aggressive this time and I think Thomas is a good place I eventually just I had a better matchup and eventually that really helped me out so Thomas GG man so yeah guys you know I got nothing more to say I think I got everything out of the way while I was re-recording this and you know told you you know eventually the matchups and whatnot my opponent might as well have won this battle but I come I think I'm going because I played really aggressive in the beginning and I think I got a lot of momentum from that and uh, it, it kind of held on. Vibrava definitely walled to the potential threats that he got and um, I did let it go down eventually due to the flash cannon but it was a very interesting battle until that point. So I want to thank Thomas for that battle and if you like this battle make sure to leave just that a like if you're new to the channel. Sup? And remember guys the sky is the freaking limit guys. Have a good day and take care right? Bye.